Hi, I'm very happy to see you again. Now we are at module 15, time series analysis. Time series analysis is used to analyze a sequence of data over a certain period, usually at regular time intervals, like daily, monthly, or quarterly. In finance, one of the objectives of time series analysis is to forecast the future value of variables, such as stock prices, interest rates, and economic growth by exploring their historical patterns. In this module, we are going to show you how to use Python to do the following analysis, technical analysis and autoregressive model. Technical analysis is a trading philosophy to predict future stock price movement by exploring movement patterns from the historical price movement and trading volume data. In contrast, advocates of fundamental analysis like Warren Buffett cast doubt on the usefulness of historical price movement. They emphasize that companies' fundamentals should play the most important role in predicting stock returns. Technical analysis can roughly divide into two sides. Momentum trading suggests that investors to follow the trend, buying stocks in uptrend and selling stocks in downtrend. And contrarian strategies suggest investors to trade against market sentiment by buying stock in downtrend and selling stock in uptrend. The following indicators are some examples of technical analysis. Moving averages, relative string index, RSI, MACD, and candlestick pattern. Moving averages is one of the most used technical analysis for momentum trading. The rationale for using a moving average is to smooth out short-term random price movement so that we can find the long-term trend of a stock. A simple moving average is calculated by taking the average of the closing prices over a specific number of time intervals, like 20, 50, 100, or 250 days. Time intervals can also be in minutes, weekly, or monthly. When we use moving averages to conduct technical analysis, we will put at least one moving average together with the price chart of the stock for comparison. The trading signals for moving average are coming from intersection. Buying signal means the time when the stock price is moving from below a moving average to above it. Sell signal means the time when the stock price is moving from above a moving average to below it. First, we get the daytime library and then we are going to import the daytime method as DT. And then we are going to import the pandas data reader library. And then set the data reader method as PDL. And we are going to use matplotlib for this module. So we also import this library as plt. Then we are going to start the time frame of our data set. The starting date would be the 1st of January 2016. And then the ending date would be 31st December 2021. And we are going to import the data of Apple stock price from stock. And then using the previous set starting date, and ending day. If you run it, you should be able to see that now our data is from oldest to the newest. This is not what we want. So what we want to do is to sort it again using I locate colon colon negative one. When you run it, now you should be able to see that the data frame is from newest to oldest. Then we are going to calculate moving averages using method rolling x dot mean where the x is the number of periods to calculate the rolling average. So first, we have the 20 days moving average. Therefore, the x is 20. And we also have the 250 days MA. So the rolling will have a number of 250 as the parameter. Then we are going to drop the first several periods. That rolling averages are not available yet. So for the first 249 date, we are going to drop it out. Then we are going to get the data from close 20MA and 250MA. And then we use port. So the title would be stock price MA20 and MA250. And when we run it, now you should be able to see the closing price, 20 day moving average and 250 days moving average. Unlike a simple line chart showing the closing prices of a stock only, candlestick charts provide more information to investors, including opening prices, highest prices, and lowest prices. 
Thus, investors can estimate the momentum on a particular trading day by observing the opening, highness, lowest, and closing prices. There are a lot of patterns that can be identified from a candlestick chart, such as shooting stars, free white soldiers, and hammer. Then, we are going to plot a candlestick chart for Tencent. First, we import historical stock price of Tencent for the period between the 1st of October 2021 to the end of December 2021. Next, we are going to use Podly, which is an open source graphic library for Python. We can use the Podly graph objects module to get the data for the candlestick chart. So here, we first import Podly graph objects as PGO. And then we are going to use a method candlestick from PGO. So here X is the Tencent dot index and then open is the open column and then high is the high column in the data set and then low is the low column in the data set and then the close is the closing price column in the data set. So finally, we are going to create the candlestick pot and show it. Here, we use the figure method from PGO. And then we are going to use the candlestick as the data. And here you use figure show. Now you should be able to see the candlestick for the stock price that we just collected. An auto regression model, unlike a normal regression model, relies only on the past values of a variable to predict the future value of this variable. The term auto regressions is a model the variable against itself. So here I show you the AL1 model. Yt is the value of the variable at time t. Yt minus 1 is the value of the variable at time t minus 1. Beta naught is the constant value of variable y. Beta 1 is the sensitivity of the current value of y on the previous value of y. Epsilon t is the randomness at time t. So here, we are going to import several libraries, Pandas, Matplotlib, StatsModelTSA, StatsModelGraphics, and StatsModelTSA.AR model. Then next, we need to upload the module 15 Excel file to the platform. And then we are going to read the file to the DF data frame. And then we are going to rename the column. And also, we are going to plot the growth rate. Now you should be able to see the growth rate change over time. Okay, here we are going to test whether the data is stationary. If p value is less than 0 0.05, then the data is stationary. So here remember, in the auto lag, you need to set AIC. And we are going to print p value. And so here we stay p value. And then you're going to get the second number from stationary. So we set the index number one. You run it. We are going to plot the parcel auto correlation and find the order of AR model using PACF. Here you can see that when the nine is above this rectangle, it means this is a auto correlation. Here it seems that the old correlation lasts to four periods. Then, we are going to estimate the parameters of an AR4 model. Previously, we suspected the autocorrelation lasts for 4 periods. So here, we are going to set the legs equal to 4. And then we type dot fit to find the best fit model. And then we are going to print out the summary. Now you should be able to see that the yt mass 4 is also significant because the c value is actually negative 4 and the p value is almost 0. So AL4 model is a good estimate. Lastly, we are going to make the prediction of the next GDP growth rate. Then we use the AL dot predict. And then remember, set the start time and then the end time. And then you type PLED. So here, you are going to make the forecast for the next period only. And our estimate is that the growth rate will be 0.66%. Next, we are going to estimate an auto regression model for the volatility of S&P 500 and predict the volatility for next period. So the first step, we want to get the historical data for VOO, which is a ETF for S&P 500 index. Then we are going to calculate the daily return. 
Here we use colon colon minus 1 to sort the data from newest to oldest. And then we use percentage changes to estimate the percentage changes stock price. Lastly, we use drop NA to drop out those number with NA value. Then we are going to calculate the weekly volatility. First, we calculate the daily standard deviation with the current and last four day returns. Therefore, here we set the rolling with parameter equal to 5, and then we are going to calculate the situation, and then we use drop NA to drop out those numbers with no value. Next, we are going to calculate the weekly standard deviation by multiplying the daily standard deviation by 5, and then take the square root. Next, we keep only the data on Friday to represent the volatility on this week. So here, we are going to keep only the data in Friday and drop our others. So lastly, we are going to reset the index of the data frame. Then next, we are going to conduct a test of stationary. And here, we are going to plot the parcel auto correlation and find the order of AR model. We use plot PACF. And then the second line above the rectangle, so we suspect that it is an AR1 model. Then we are going to estimate the parameters of an AR1 model. So here AR equal auto regret. And then remember, we set the leg equal 1. And then dot fit to find the best fit model. And then we are going to print out the summary. And you should be able to see that the C value is very large and the P value is almost 0. So it means that T minus 1 seems to be very important in explaining the volatility in time T. So lastly, we are going to make a prediction on the volatility in next week. So we use the AL.predict, and now you should be able to see that our prediction would be 1.3%. Okay, that's all for module 15 time series analysis. If you want to do some exercise, you can try to do these two exercises. Okay, so thank you for watching. I'm looking forward to see you in the next module. Have a good day. Bye.